What's going on guys? Lately I've been getting a lot of questions about what desktop OS I recommend for a workstation and how to reduce the bloat of Ubuntu. Um, I use Ubuntu in these tutorials for what I think are a bunch of very good reasons. First, um, it's a very popular distribution. It's very easy to get started with, so it's great for beginners and the popularity makes it such that you can take your Ubuntu knowledge and kind of begin working at a company fairly quickly without having to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. That said, um, if you're looking to kind of reduce the bulk of this thing, especially if you're just trying to play around on a VM and get some skills, you may not need an entire 10 gigs of software that come with the default Ubuntu install, the desktop version. However, you do occasionally want a nice interface, um, especially if you watch the i3 videos that I put out, um, you may want to try i3. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a Linux install that's really bare bones, just the core system, not a lot of software. Uh, I believe all I have on here is i3, Firefox, and Vim. So instead of 10 gigs, it looks like we're using uh, 2.3 gigs. So this is a nice way to get a really small VM and a window manager that doesn't take up a ton of like graphical memory and act really sluggish on a VM. Let's get started. So the very first thing you'll want to do is actually download the minimal install of Ubuntu. So this is not something like Ubuntu desktop or server. It's a minimal base install of Ubuntu. That means you're not actually customizing the OS as such. You still get system D out of the box. You still get the basic stuff that Ubuntu is made from and configured as, but it doesn't come with any of the extra software on top of that sort of what you would think of as a core operating system. If that's something that you want to do, like customizing things on a on a deeper level, I would recommend first um, checking out something like Arch, maybe something like Crux, and uh, maybe even looking at the Linux from scratch project. If you just Google Linux from scratch or LFS, um, it's a great guide on basically building your own distribution and not just selecting the software like we're going to do now. So on this page, URL is going to be in the description. Scroll down, choose whatever your architecture is. It's likely that this is just going to be 64-bit and you will want to choose 1604 or whatever the latest version is for your desktop play operating system. You'll see that instead of uh, several gigs, this is actually just uh, 54 megabytes. So you can start that download, and uh, I'll show you how to get that installed in a VM in just a second. I'm now going to rush through creating a new VM. If this confuses you, um, just watch one of the other videos that I've done on this. So if you type some version of Ubuntu, this will go to Linux, Ubuntu 64-bit, that's what we want. Hit next. We're going to give this thing uh, 2048, so two gigs of memory. We're going to create a virtual hard disk. Just accept the default dynamically allocated so it won't grab that entire chunk right away. Um, we're just going to say 15, I'm going to give it 15 gigs. Again, this is not going to be allocated all at once, but sort of just taken as the machine needs it. Great, so you've got this machine. Now we're going to have to power it on and navigate to, this is not going to find a boot drive, so so navigate to your mini ISO, the minimal install that you just downloaded, open that up, and boot from there. You want to click in, uh, because the guest add-ons aren't installed, right, the right control button will get you in and out of the mouse capture on the screen. So I'm hitting right control, now I'm inside the VM, hitting right control, I'm outside again. So click in, hit enter to install. This is going to be a minimal sort of command line install. Select your language here, enter, selects, arrows, move, tab, changes what's selected. So we're going to say English US, I'm not going to detect, I'm just going to select from a list, English US, keyboard layout, this is going to detect my VMware fake virtual network hardware, grab an address, now you can select a host name, we're going to call this mini Ubuntu, hit enter to confirm, um, archive mirror, select whichever one's closest to you, this looks about right, 
I don't have a proxy, so you can either hit enter or tab and enter to continue without an HTTP proxy for the packages. Now this is going to run out and fetch the base sort of environment packages for you. So this will give you what you need to kind of bootstrap the rest of the system. Just let this thing download and install, and I'll meet you back here when that's done. Okay, the time has come to create our first non-root user. We'll go with Dave. That user's username will be a Dave as well. I'm going to choose a highly secure password here. Uh, L-I-N-U-X. You go, girl. Okay, so this is going to warn you. Uh, obviously, you should have a secure password, but I'm going to use a weak one. Since this is a VM and I'm not worried um, about actually encrypting things, I'm going to say no. Again, if this you're doing if you're doing this on a laptop or something, uh, I do recommend that you encrypt your home directory if you haven't done full disk encryption. Confirm your time zone. Now this thing is going to run gparted. What we're going to do is use the entire disk and set up LVM. If you're doing this on a laptop, I would choose use entire disk and set up encrypted LVM. So that is if you're doing this on real hardware and not inside a virtual box. And I recommend using LVM because if you need to grow or shrink any of your volumes, like for example, if we decide we want a bigger virtual hard disk or something, or we want to shrink it or grow it, um, LVM is going to make that a whole lot easier, at least growing it. So we're going to use LVM, use the whole disk. Again, this is just our virtual hard disk. Going to select that one. It's the only one it can see anyway. And now it's going to ask us to confirm that we blow away everything on this empty virtual hard disk. I'm going to use all of that space. And now we're going to write everything to disk. If you're doing this on real hardware, that is the yes enter that actually blows everything away on there. So be sure before you hit that. Obviously on a VM, it's not a big deal. So base system install, I'll be back when that is done. You'll see this going out and fetching all of the base system binaries that it needs. Okay, our base system has been installed. It's asking us how we want to update. If you're going to be in this system every day, I'd suggest no automatic updates. If this is going to be up and running unattended, security updates automatically installed is a good idea. Um, we're not even going to really talk about this. So I'm going to say no automatic updates because when I need some updates, I'll go fetch my own damn updates. Thank you. If you're running a server, it can make sense to install security updates automatically. So here we are at the software selection screen. You can go for a manual package selection if you want to wade through uh, an extremely long menu of things to install. But we're just going to kind of install the very basics and then get in there and customize it ourselves. You can see that these are some sort of package sets that you might want to use, like Ubuntu Server, OpenSSH Server, um, a regular Ubuntu Studio desktop, different sort of subversions of Ubuntu. You can also space select. So if you wanted just a regular Ubuntu desktop, hitting space here and then continuing would do it. But we just want standard system utilities. So we're going to make sure that that's the only thing that's checked here. Hit tab and then enter to continue. So we've chosen sort of a minimum set of bare bones system utilities. And the downloader is going to go fetch those and install them now. I believe this is the last round of software installs. OK, so we're done here. We've got everything installed that we need. And this is going to install Grub, the bootloader, onto this disk. And we will hit yes. So it's going to just uh, install Grub and do an update Grub, make sure we see all the kernels, etc and we'll be able to reboot in a second. So the important thing is when this reboots, uh, yes, system clock UTC, okay, so we're about to reboot. So we'll hit continue, finishing the installation, sig term, reboot, devices, remove the disk, so we've removed our optical disk here, which was our installer disk, otherwise it would just boot up the installer again. And now you'll see the system boot for the first time. 
We've got the Ubuntu loader and no graphical interface yet because we haven't installed one yet. So log in with the user you created. And we're here. We've got a minimal but full featured Ubuntu system and you can kind of customize this. So you could go off and do whatever you want at this point. I'm going to show you in the next part software that I recommend installing. And that's going to include a graphical user interface that you can set up very quickly and just sort of have it work right away. You can see that our system right now takes, where is it, 9%. So we're just over 1.1 gig out of, uh, out of 13 available. So that's quite a bit smaller. I think a full Ubuntu desktop system somewhere around 8 or 10 gigs. So there you go. In the next section, we're going to install the basic software that we're going to need. So the first bit of software I like to install is the guest additions. So go ahead and insert the guest additions CD image. However, you'll see it's not auto-mounted. So what we want to do is sudo mount dev cd-rom at mount. So you're going to mount the cd-rom device, which we just inserted the virtual fake CD into this guest edition CD image at mount. So it'll be mounted read-only. We can go to mount and see here we are. Before you do this, what this is going to do is install the Linux guest editions. It's going to install a kernel module which it has to build, which means you need the build essentials package. That'll be like a compiler, make, other tools that you need for building software. So you'll do an apt-get update. Your system is up to date at this point. It's just an old sysadmin habit. And then you'll say sudo apt-get install build essential. That's build hyphen essential. So this is going to install a whole bunch of libraries, a compiler, lots and lots of stuff. Hit yes to accept and I'll cut out the nice boring install. Okay, we've installed Build Essential and we can now run our VBox Linux editions.run file. As always, check to make sure this is all copacetic here. Everything looks good. Um, and this is not doing anything horrifically evil. Once you've confirmed that that is the case, you can now say sudo VBox Linux editions.run you need to run this as root. You're going to build and install a kernel module. So let this go. It's going to take a little while. And once we've done that, we can restart the machine and uh, it'll use the guest editions module. And we can activate all the nice little features that that has, like full screen, etc. However, before we do that, we're going to install one last thing. And that is our graphical user environment. So what we're really going to do is install the light DM uh, display manager which will pull in all the things like the X server and other things that we need. It's going to be kind of a, a lot of packages referred to by this. And then our actual window manager is going to be i3. I've showed this before. If you've got questions, you're curious about it, you can watch those videos first. I'll link those. But basically, that's all we need. So this is our login manager. When you boot the machine, this thing gets started, and you can choose to log in and choose your window manager from there, and i3 is the window manager we want. So we're going to go ahead and accept the enormous list of things that's going to be installed. We're going to grab 160 megs, so most of these things are small, but it will take uh, an extra gig of disk space when we're done. So go ahead and do this, it's going to take a little while. I'll meet you back here when it's done. Now that those are installed, we could actually start LightDM now. You, you would use sudo because it needs to be started as root, but we're actually going to restart the machine. So we're going to say shut down R now, and that will make sure that we boot into an environment where that kernel module for VirtualBox is loaded so we can do like full screen mode and all kinds of nice things. Meanwhile, I would go to machine settings while this thing boots, go to advanced, click on shared clipboard, and do bidirectional. This one's kind of hard to find. Uh, but it's really useful. So just go ahead and do that. 
can see LVMs found starting the OS. Moment of truth, there it is. So up here you can select your desktop environment. I3 in our case, it's the only one that's installed. Log in as your user. And because we don't have an i3 config yet, you'll hit enter to generate a config. You can use the up down key to select which you want as your uh, mod key, Windows or Alt. On my laptop where I actually do this, uh, I use Alt, but sorry, I use Windows, but on this keyboard, I'm going to use Alt. Whatever, whatever fits you. So again, Alt and the number changes the desktop you're on, but Alt Enter gets you a shell, and Alt D gives you your launcher. So if we want Firefox, we can't launch it because we don't have it. So the list of things that I recommend. At the very least, for some sort of desktop machine like we've got here, I would install Firefox, Firefox almost, Vim or Emacs, and maybe something like Glances or HTOP, and then really whatever you want after that. There's no unnecessary space being taken up by software you don't use. There's no unnecessary stuff running in the background, taking up memory and processing time. So you can kind of build out from here. You've got a minimal desktop environment. You've got all the basic amenities, so a shell. You can get to a shell. You've got a desktop manager. You can run windowed applications. And you can go from here. But this should give you a decent base that if you do need to use Ubuntu or if you want to continue using it, it's a perfectly fine choice. This gives you a very great minimal base to work off of. And working with something like this, not having everything done for you, it's a good way to get a little bit deeper into Linux, solve a little, little bit more of your own problems, and uh, eventually graduate to something like Arch, where you're really doing a lot of the customization yourself. So I hope that's been helpful. Enjoy your new little VM. May it uh, help you learn Linux and have a good time. If this has been helpful, uh, make sure to subscribe for more. I'm going to do an Arch video pretty soon, so I'll link to that here when it's done. Thanks again for watching. You guys rock. See you soon.